Hey now, it's your boy Thunder3377, aka Venom Girl88, aka Jimmy D. But really, my name is Steve. Alrighty. For the last year, I've been watching a ton of YouTube videos of a bunch of people showing off amazing comic collections. And what do you know? I'm fucking jealous. But to get over my jealousy, I decided I would make some videos of my own. Because you know what? I collect comics. Why can't I show them? So I'm gonna. Alrighty. This first one here is The Uncanny Avengers. And it's written by Rick Remender. And this is the first issue. And this one's a variant by Scotty Young. And it's signed by Stan Lee and Rick Remender. And this is the series that kind of got me back into comics. I had collected when I was younger. I mean, really younger. Like, child. And... I decided after reading a couple of these issues that I needed to spend every dollar I made on comic books. Well, and my daughter and family and bills, I suppose. But yeah, any dollar that I could use, I wanted to put it towards comics. So, this series, it kind of stems out of the events of Avengers vs. X-Men. And Captain America decides that he's going to put Havoc in charge of a team of Avengers. And also add in some X-Men into there and try and bring peace to both teams. And you'll kind of have to read the series to see how well that succeeds. It doesn't. I mean, it kind of does, but it doesn't. So, that was the Scotty Young variant. This here is cover A, and it's drawn by John Cassidy. Still written by Rick Remender. And the team's pretty sweet, though. It's got a bunch of my favorite characters from when I was growing up. And I figure I'd just show you a couple different covers from this series. This one's number six. And on the cover here is Thor and Apocalypse battling out. And it's, it's all set in the past, this issue is. and But it has huge ramifications for alternate futures and the entire series for the most part. Basically, the big baddies in this are... Children of Apocalypse, and the Red Skull, who's, spoiler alert, has the brain of Charles Xavier in him, so, it's fucking cool. And this one's also got art by Daniel Acuna. I don't know if I mentioned John Cassidy for the first one. Anyways. This here is issue 14, featuring art from Steve McNiven. This one was talked about for a little bit, for maybe half a second. And it features an awesome battle between the Scarlet Witch and Rogue, and Wonder Man for that most, for that matter. Anyways, I just love the art on this whole series too. There's a bunch of detail, and it doesn't feel rushed, and it feels like somebody was putting a lot of love into it. And you know what? Love's good. Love is great. Love me, love you. From Uncanny Avengers began the event Axis, which was also written by Rick Remender. And basically, Magneto, being the dick he is, thinks that he needs to take charge. And he sends uh, the Red Skull off into death. And he, Red Skull is reborn into this crazy motherfucking onslaught thing. And it goes nuts from there. The art's still good, but I don't know... What exactly was going on with Remender, but the story's not as great as most of Uncanny Avengers was. A lot of uh, the side issues for Axis were pretty cool. They didn't really have anything to do with the story, but I thought they were pretty cool. Like the Hop Goblin one, and there was a Carnage one, and some other bullshits. Anyways, this one is kind of hot for half a second, and I think it will get hot again for a minute. Because this features... The first appearance of the Secret Warriors. This is the Mighty Avengers, number 13. This is the second print variant. I recommend this be the one that you search for first, because it features the team right on the cover. And they're supposed to be in the next season of Agents of, Se uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Come on, now. And, I don't know, the art in this series is pretty cool, too. The whole secret invasion with the Skrulls coming over and taking apart... The Avengers and becoming the Avengers for half a second it was kind of cool. 
This is the regular cover with a Captain America scroll. Can't beat that unless you try, which I'm going to try right now. This one here is We Can Never Go Home. This book is hot as hell. It's written by Matthew Rosenberg and it's published by Black Mass Studios. And this is one of the 50 print Larry's comic, Jetpack comics, or Phantom comics. One of the three. I got it from Larry's comics, but there's only 50 printed. And cover A is selling anywhere from 70 to 80 bucks right now. The story is fucking awesome. I don't recommend you get it for the value of the comic. I recommend you get it for the story. Because it's basically X-Men meets punk rock. If you're cool with that, then you're cool with me. This one here is another one of the 50 print covers. And there is a regular version of this that's not sepia toned, but I think this one's pretty sweet. There's also another 50 print from San Diego Comic Con that's selling anywhere up to $1,000, which is a little bit outrageous for a book that came out literally months ago. I mean, $1,000, that could get you pretty nice giant size X Men if you're, if you're talking to me. From there, we shall go into Amazing Spider-Man 360. This begins the Carnage storyline. I mean, it doesn't really because there's a, there is a first appearance of Cletus Cassidy that you should pick up to. But this is the first cameo, I believe, towards the end of it, of Carnage. And he's a villain of Spider-Man's that I think has nowhere to go but up. He's already pretty popular. He hasn't been featured in a major movie yet. And when he does, I think 360 through 363 will rise even higher. They're already selling as a pack around like 60 bucks. I mean, you can get a near mint even higher than that. But the print run on these books was pretty high. So be wary of that. Here's 361, which is pretty sweet too. This is the first full appearance of Carnage. There's an awesome second print, too, that's actually pretty high in value as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Am I doing okay so far? This is my first video. Did I mention that? Yeah, this is my first video. Here's 362, which I think this cover is the best one out of the whole set. Obviously, it's got Venom and Carnage on it. And the whole symbiote story of Spider-Man is one of my favorite tales. I mean, there's some earlier issues where I think Peter Parker is cooler. I mean, he's not cooler, he's actually nerdier, but that's kind of what makes him cooler in it. This is 363. This is kind of where the art, though, got a little outrageous for me. Uh, Peter Parker's eyes, or Spider-Man's eyes, that is, got huge. Everybody's eyes got huge. Muscles got put on top of muscles, and Aliens were involved way too much, and just, you never knew who to trust, but, you know, I mean, it wasn't classic Spider-Man. It wasn't Spider-Man versus Goblin or anything like that. It was a whole new twist, and, and that's kind of what the comic community needed, I guess, back then. I don't know. I wasn't really collecting. I was a year old. But, from what I've read, that's what they needed. It needed to stir up. It needed something to bring on a new age of comics. The Copper Age, obviously. And... Copper Age kind of started with this. It wasn't exactly this, but this is one of the first issues, if not late bronze, early copper. This is Secret Wars issue 8, first appearance of the black suit. I was at my local comic shop, Ravenswood Comics, here in upstate New York. Check them out if you're in the area. And I saw this on the wall as I was checking out. And I asked, how much is that price tag? And he said, $8. And I said, I'll freaking take that. Now, this copy is nowhere near near mint. Nowhere near near mint. Anyways, it's probably, uh, I don't know. It's probably a fine plus. Uh, maybe a fine, maybe a fine minus. I don't know more that I look at it. It does have some spine wear. And there's some dirt there on the white. But... How can you pass up first black suit, first symbiote? I can't, unless it was for $7 at another store. 
Anyways, from First Black Suit, we obviously got to show another book that I just picked up, which is First Venom, ASM 300. This one's a 9.2. I'll just hold it here. This one's a 9.2 CGC. And this book also is another one of those books that I don't think has anywhere to go but up. There is a huge print run on it. And, I mean, there's over a thousand or so in 9.2 already in the CGC census. But Venom really hasn't been a key player in any of the movies. And with the Marvel Sony rights kind of being worked out, I see Venom getting his own movie, or if not, being a huge part of a Spider-Man movie at least. And this book already sells between 200 and 300 and 9.2 and over a thousand for a 9.8 right now. So if you can get your hands on one of these, I recommend doing it. Even with the price is where they are right now, you should still check it out. Because Venom is one of those characters like Deadpool that they have a cult following and there's people that are always going to be searching for it. It's something different. It's not your typical superhero, supervillain. It's anti-hero. And that's kind of what the generation of people that are between the ages of 15 and 30 kind of got into. And those are the people that are going to have megabucks, presuming, in the next few years to spend on comics like Amazing Spider-Man 300. So... But I also recommend it just for the story. I mean, this is Todd McFarlane artwork, obviously. And uh, the art on it is pretty sweet. I don't know. It's not everybody's style. There are big muscles and there are giant eyes. But that's what happens when you read Copper Comics. For the most part, I guess. Anyways, like I said, my name is Steve. And I appreciate you checking out the time to watch my video, taking the time to check out my video, I should say. And as soon as you leave here, I highly recommend that you go check out Lightning2288, Jimmy C, ETA Nick, uh, Mercenaut, Carnage Man 99 a bunch of other people. If, if you type in Hump Day Hall, you can check out a great weekly series uh, from a guy named Philly Cuts. I can't remember what his... YouTube name is right now, but he's got great videos every week, and I hope to be putting out at least a video every week showing off new comics, old comics, and everything in between from my collection. Alrighty, have a great day, and end hate.